We're here talking to Emily Lim today. Hi, Emily. Hi, Jay. Thanks for coming in and having a chat to us about what the borough was like in the 1990s. The first question we have is, what did the main street of Queenscliff look like in the 1990s? There's probably only a couple of things that really stand out for me in the 90s. First one was probably Eddie George's, so that was a huge big sort of haberdashery emporium in the main street near or where Panache is these days. Um, I remember as a little girl going in there and playing with all of the buttons and the threads and picking out new socks and those sorts of things. Um, the other places that sort of stay in my mind were the, the fish and chip shop, which was actually just up a couple of doors from Eddie's. So we used to catch the bus after high school and go and stop there and get a dollar fifty worth of chips and share it all and then head to netball training down down at the courts down the road. Um, the pizza shop has been there since as long as I can remember, but I don't remember a lot of the rest of the other street. There certainly weren't the cafes or anything like that in that I frequent now, sort of in my memory. And the main buildings, the big established buildings, like was the post office a post office at that time? Yeah. The post office was. Uh, the Royal was definitely white, which looked a lot nicer. Um, the On the corner opposite the post office was actually a supermarket, so that was where my first job was. Uh, I was about 14 years of age and used to, started off stacking the fruits and veggies and working the deli and those sorts of things and then ended up on the cash register. Um, it's certainly not a, a supermarket anymore. And we used to run, there was at the back of that shop a little cafe there that we sort of used to run from the, the till in the supermarket into the cafe when we heard the bell go and go and make coffees and teas in that. Um, but the rest of them, the View Grand, I remember still being very, very similar um, and same with many of the other major buildings. Great. And so then we move on to Point Lonsdale. The main street in Point Lonsdale, I suppose that was closer to your home. Was that where you hung out a bit as a teenager? Or? Yeah, we spent a lot of time in the main street. There was always the top shop. So that was right up the top of the hill where the new wine bar is at the moment. So that was a great milk bar, fish and chip place. Um, we had friends that ran it at the time. So we spent a lot of the time sort of out the back um, helping out so we thought it was probably being more of a hindrance than anything <laughs> um and then we spent a lot of time at cafe angelina's just down the road which is where the fish and chip shop is now at the moment so they had beautiful pasta dishes and and everything like that that was quite a, a funky little restaurant in the main street we um i used to spend a lot of time in lighthouse design so lynn hunt a family friend of ours had that little shop there and it was all things that she'd hand painted and hand crafted beautiful really colorful paintings and everything so I know one of her main pictures is actually up in the doctor's surgery or it was before the big extension I think it still is um, beautiful seascapes that sort of had lots and lots of color so that was where we bought all of our our presents and our gifts and things like that and was there still a playground there overlooking the water or oh um there may have been a small one at that stage. It was certainly nothing like what it is now. Um, we spent so much time at the beach, um, growing up on the beach, that we probably didn't really frequent frequent that sort of that park area at the front. We were sort of always down on the sand. Mm. Yeah. And so what kind of jobs, you've talked about working in the shop as a teenager, mm -hmm. but your, your parents and other adults around you, what kind of jobs were they doing at the time? Uh, my dad was a civil engineer over at the, um, over in Drysdale. It's now part of the city of Greater Geelong, but it was a, like a separate shire at that stage. Mm -hmm. So he worked in um, road construction there. Mum always travelled into Geelong and was at Target head office in working in there so they sort of dad was as working as locally as possible over in Drysdale but that was about it yeah and your like your parents friends were most of them having to commute for work uh several of them were actually high school teachers so they were working at what was Queenscliff High which was where I went to initially um several of them that were sports teachers over at the high school so that was always kind of handy. Um, I remember going, we used to do PE when I was at the Queenscliff campus and more often than not we'd end up 
sneaking over the dunes to the beach to have a quick swim in our lunch break, usually with a, a PE teacher with us <laughs> joining in. <laughs> Fantastic. So that, that takes me to the next question is, what, what did you do for fun? Obviously a lot of it was spent on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was always heavily involved in the netball, so we spent a lot of Saturdays at the netball and then watching the football. Uh, we always did nippers together. Mum and Dad had a rule, if you were going to live this close to the beach, you had to be proficient in the water. So we spent a lot of summer um, learning nippers, practising, competing in nippers. We used to uh, play tennis, so often down at the tennis courts um, getting lessons. I used to get lessons off Dougie Quail, which a lot of locals sort of recognise as a bit of an identity around here. Um, mostly the activities were sport related. There, there was no skate park, there was not a lot of anything else to do other than sport, which is not a bad thing. And what about the movies? Over summer, there were, um, they used to set up a picture theatre at the sports centre in Ocean Grove where the pool is now. So they'd sort of clear all the basketball courts and set up a big uh, temporary screen that we used to go as teenagers there. Um, but other than that, you'd have to catch a bus into Geelong and go and watch the movies. Yeah. So just like today, really. Yeah. Yep. So if you had to think of one place in the borough that's your favourite place or somewhere special to you, what would that be? I think I'd have to say the Bunny Woods. All growing up, um, every Father's Day, every Mother's Day, we'd always pack up a picnic and games of whether we take the football or volleyball or bocce or whatever and go and have a picnic and a barbecue down in the Bunny Woods. And where is that? <laughs> <laughs> if you go um, on the beach side opposite the, the cemetery, sort of mm -hmm. closer to the main street, there's uh, like a whole little park type section with hidden tables and trees and little pathways and um, it was always just a little nice. You could always find a little private spot to just go and sort of sit or be as a family and have fun and you sort of, yeah, it's nice. Lots of fun. And is it bunny as in rabbits? Yeah, I think uh, so. Ah, bunny woods. Lovely. All right, Emily, well, thanks for your time today. And thank you for sharing with us um, what Queenscliff was like in the 1990s. Thank you.